What's up everybody, Brad here, and this is the video. This is the video that I asked if you guys wanted and a lot of you said yes. So this is my follow-up video to my AOC 27 G2 review. We're gonna see how this monitor fares after four to five months of use and if I'd still recommend it. So let's get to it. If you're new to the channel, I post home theater and gaming related content, including technical breakdowns, graphics, performance, and audio reviews of video games, as well as videos just like the one you're watching right now. Consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking that bell notification so you'll never miss out when I upload a new video. Also, I do have some Amazon affiliate links in the description below, and I get a small commission from those when you click on one and buy anything on Amazon. This doesn't cost you a dime and helps support the channel. So this is gonna be a more off the cuff type of video. I'm not gonna do a full re-review of the 27G2. Now, if you haven't, seen my original review, like if you're finding this video now and you're kind of shopping around for this monitor, check out the card above. That's the full review that I did uh, about five months ago. Uh, this video is intended to just do a, basically be a follow-up to that video and we're going to go over basically how I feel the monitor has held up over these five months, some things that I maybe have forgotten in the original review, as well as answering some uh, common comments that uh, I, I found that just keep coming up uh, in that reviews comment section. So I'll be going over those near the end of the video. So you might, you know, if you've watched, if you watched that and commented on the original video, your your comment might be featured in this video. So keep a lookout for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in here and uh, talk about something that I didn't mention in my review that I, I kind of just omitted for whatever reason, I just completely forgot about. And that's the G menu, which is basically an application that uh, you install on Windows from AOC that allows you full granular control of every setting in the AOC 27G2. So brightness, contrast, color temperature, dynamic contrast, all of the DCB uh, color modes. You basically do everything you can in the menu on the AOC 27G2 within this application. So even down to like, you know, setting the FPS counter where you want it on the screen. Do you want it upper left, upper right, you know, whatever. Uh, even the uh, the little the little reticle thing that you could put in the center of the screen, you can activate that through there. It's really cool and you avoid having to mess with the crappy buttons on the monitor, which are, are the worst. Talking about that, uh, I did mention in my previous review that the timeout is really short, it's like 10 seconds. And what I failed to mention was if you dig through the menu, you can actually set the timeout up to 120 seconds. So that's really, really helpful. I wish I would have caught that before I, I, you know, put the video out. But yeah, definitely set that higher because 10 seconds is just way too short. Now in my review, I don't think I mentioned the DCB modes, which are basically just color filter modes that will apply, you know, kind of a landscape filter or skin tone filter. Um, I didn't mention those because I typically don't use them. They screw up the color accuracy and you basically throw out that 120% sRGB coverage when you enable those modes. Like they just, it just becomes completely inaccurate. Uh, same with the HDR setting. They have like a fake HDR. The monitor doesn't support HDR, uh, but they have like three different settings. Basically they end up looking like you're trying to take a really low resolution source and upscale it by adding sharpening and stuff and it just ends up looking really grainy and kind of odd and it just it looks crappy basically don't use it now another setting that I didn't mention before was dynamic contrast and that's mainly because I don't use those types of things typically because what happens is when they're dynamically adjusting you know contrast it, the fluctuations can be so severe that it causes like this flickering and becomes really distracting uh, but here that's actually not the case I actually really like the way this looks, uh, it doesn't really call attention to itself ever in, in my uh, in my experience using it. And I, I've been using it on games and, and when watching movies and stuff on the monitor, it's just really kind of a subtle uh, fluctuation that it, your eye just won't pick up uh, right away. It, it's, it's really, really nice. I'd highly recommend, uh, you know, testing it out yourself if you're playing a game, like something like Death Stranding. It's, it's definitely, uh, a surprise to me that a, a monitor that's $210 has a dynamic contrast setting that bests even, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollar gaming monitors. Like it, it's really cool. So definitely check that setting out. Now I did mention in the review, I have an NVIDIA graphics card and G-Sync on this monitor has worked with zero issues. 
uh, for the past four or five months. No flickering, no ghosting, no weirdness. Uh, it just works. Like it, it, it is um, G-Sync certified, so that's part of it. Uh, but with that said, I mean, the other two monitors that I have behind me, the BenQ monitors, they, they're not G-Sync certified and they both work flawlessly too. So uh, no flickering or anything like that. I've never been able to test it with a, an AMD graphics card, but you know, it should work without issue there. Another thing I didn't mention in the review video were the bezels and they're actually extremely thin and they would work well in a multi-monitor setup, like a three monitor setup, or even one that, you know, you have like a fourth monitor above your main monitor. I, I mean, I don't know why you do that, but some people do it, it's cool, you know, it's personal preference, so. I also didn't mention any of the presets. Uh, this kind of goes hand in hand with the color stuff I've mentioned before, but they have like game mode presets for like, you know, RTS, FPS, racing, all that stuff. I don't use any of them. They make the picture quality look like absolute dog crap. Uh, I don't recommend you use any of them either. Uh, you, you may get some slight uh, reduction in input latency, but honestly, it's to the point where it probably wouldn't be noticeable to most people, uh, unless you you know drank like 12, 12 cases of Red Bull or something, uh, then you might just end up in the hospital or dead. I did mention the stand briefly in my review and I wasn't really for or against it. And honestly, at this point, I'm against it. That I really hate the stand. It makes putting it on some type of monitorizer or if you have maybe two or three different monitors and you have this one right next to it, uh, it kind of just, it just stands out so much and looks weird and gaudy. I don't, it, it doesn't really do anything for me. It, it doesn't look sleek. It doesn't look cool. It just looks kind of stupid. Like I, I would prefer just kind of a standard, you know, square type of stand right in the middle. Uh, these just tend to overhang anything. You put it close to the edge of a desk, it's gonna overhang. You put it on a monitorizer, it's gonna overhang. And it's just, you know, you're gonna like poke your eye out or something. No, not that far, but it, it's just uh, totally it, just kind of an oversight, I guess. I don't know who, just not a fan of the design. Just uh, honestly, just gonna say that right now. I, I think it just needs to be redesigned. I hope that whatever the, the Mark II version of this monitor that they eventually come out with will feature a better stand. Now I did say in my review that I'm not a fan of the red accents and that's still the case. Luckily, they don't really call attention to themselves in a dimly lit room. I, I barely ever notice them and they're not like this bright red that just like, you know, sticks out into your face. You know, when you come into the room and you're like, oh God, it's, it's red, I don't, wh who, why? But yeah, I'm just not a fan of the red accents. I hope that eventually manufacturers of monitors will kind of start adding some type of customization feature where, you know, they, they include a couple different colors or maybe just the black base color and then you could take it off and add red or blue or whatever you want to match your setup or RGB lighting and stuff. Now, and speaking of the overall picture quality, it, it's just excellent. Like for the price, you, you get an amazing picture. I, I mean, there's just no no doubt about it. Uh, I still stand by that to this day. 210 bucks will get you a monitor that I think a lot of other companies would charge three or $400 for. You don't have some of the features that those three, four or $500 monitors have like HDR support, stuff like that. So that's something to keep in mind if you're really after uh, HDR support. Just the picture quality alone, the sharpness and clarity of the, the display overall, um, I, I can't recommend this monitor enough. Uh, and even at 27 inches, I know a lot of people will have questions about that. And that's one of the comments that I get a lot on the review is, you know, I, I've read that 1080p at 27 inches is blurry and pixelated and 1440p is a better option. And I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and address, address that now in my opinion on it. Personally, if you can afford a 1440p monitor, go for it. If you're gonna pay for a, a good quality 1440p monitor, you know, the BenQ EX2780Q, um, in my personal opinion, is one of the best 1440p monitors out there, but it's, you know, it's around five or 600 bucks. So it's, it's, it's not just a quick drop in the bucket, you know. The, the AOC 27D2, 210 bucks, much more easy to swallow. Now, I know that there was like a time where like this monitor was very hard to find and it still is, you know, it's hard to, hard to get in stock uh, or find in stock on Amazon and there's scalpers that, that drop in and, and you know, will jack the price up really high, but at 210 bucks, definitely, definitely worth it. All right, so now to answer some of you guys' comments from my actual review video, and I'm sorry in advance if I butcher your name, 
I'm probably not gonna say most of them just because of that fact. So Sam the Man asks, is this the 27 G2U or is this another model that's called the 27 G2 because the title kind of confused me. It is labeled the AOC 27 G2 review, gaming monitor review. So I don't know how that's confusing, but it is the AOC 27 G2. The 27 G2U has speakers and a built-in USB hub and the 27 G2 has neither of those. Moving on, uh, Script Tease, I love your username by the way. Time code 424. Basically, he's saying only check out 144 Hertz Gaming if you can afford to get a nice monitor. If you try this and you're poor, life will suck after this. I mean, I, I didn't basically say that. I think I said that, that if you're poor, don't do this. No, I don't I don't think I said anything like that. I mean, look, if, if you can afford a $210 monitor, that personally, I don't think is a lot of money in, t in terms of gaming monitors when you stack it up against something from like asus or you know some other company uh you know that's six seven hundred dollars for the you know 1080p gaming monitor that's also like a tn panel um the the aoc is a really fairly priced i think at 210 bucks and it's 144 hertz free sync uh g-sync compatible all that stuff uh so it, it is a nice monitor uh for the price you really I don't think you can find an equivalent monitor that has all those features. So, uh, but yeah, if you do go to 144 Hertz, whether you're poor or not, um, going back to 60 is like, why would you do that? It's just so difficult. Lure X says, looks like Austin Powers and Dr. Evil combined to become one man. Yes, I did. That's a terrible impression. Sergio, I'm gonna try to butcher your last name. You're so bald that I can see your thoughts. Nice review. What am I thinking right now? Pip Sue says, love your bald head subscribed. And then he he's crying. I mean, those those look like tears of joy, don't they? Either that or he's that making fun of me. Bob Kermit, love the frog. Um, you are quite bald. Yes, I am. Thank you. SSD Tom and me says, any bald tech reviewer looks like they know what they're talking about. I'd agree. Um, we, we often do know what we're talking about because there is more oxygen that gets to our brain than someone with hair. Plus, you know, I think I mentioned in the comment uh, to you that the glasses definitely do help. Wavy asks, this cost me $480, how's it budget? Well, it's not $480 MSRP, it's $210 MSRP. Uh, there was a moment in time where there was a shortage on this monitor and the scalpers were coming in and just jacking the price up to, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars, which is just ridiculous. Um, but it also does pay to do some research and realize that the monitor is is not that much. Dog asks, hi, so can you plug PS4 to this? Yes, you can. You can plug any console um, that you want to this. You won't benefit from the 144 hertz uh, high frame rate or high refresh rate but you will be able to play uh, you know, PS4 or Xbox One X or uh, even a Nintendo Switch. Cream Puff says, you remind me of my culinary teacher. Thank you. I don't, uh, I don't know what your culinary teacher looks like, but I'm sure he's handsome. Dimitri Shat asks, is the function flicker-free important if the monitor has 144 hertz? Does this monitor have the flicker-free function? Uh, it does have the flicker-free function. It's listed on AOC's website under the specifications for this monitor. It can be important if you're looking at a computer monitor all day and are sensitive to flicker. Uh, it can reduce eye fatigue and stuff like that. So uh, it is important. I just don't see it on this monitor. So. Uh, but it does have it, so. Justin Patterson says, I'm torn between the 27G2 and the LG 27GL650F-B, but this monitor having a frame rate counter kind of makes me want to see what Borderlands 2 does with those two ricochet guns because I've noticed I can bottom out the frames when dual wielding on, on uh, X-Brick 360. I thought it was an Xbox 360, but X I'll take X-Brick 360. Um, yeah, don't buy the monitor just for the frame rate counter. I mean, it's a nice, cool little feature to have, but uh, honestly, I, I don't miss it on the other monitors I use. It, again, cool feature to have, but I would never recommend getting a monitor just based on that. Coolin, Cullen, Cullen, we'll say Cullen, asks, can you post the ICC profile? No, I don't have one. Um, I didn't calibrate it with a meter. Uh, I didn't calibrate it by eye. Um, I don't have an ICC profile for it. So um, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I can't help you there. Electric Boom 992 asks, can I clean the display with my cellar water? I don't know. What's my cellar water? 
Here's what I found from health.com Micellar water is a facial cleanser that removes dirt and makeup while restoring moisture to your skin. Yeah, don't use that. Ahmed Youssef asks, can you overclock it to 165 hertz? No, unfortunately. Uh, the highest I got was 146 hertz. And honestly, it's not even really worth it at that point. Scythe, I see what you did there with the numbers and stuff. Uh, what about the pixel density? Yeah, what about it? It's, it's dense. Pixels are dense. And no, um, the pixel density is fine. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of the comments are people saying, hey, uh, you know, this is, I've heard this is blurry and uh, pixelated and stuff, and that's just not the case. It's sharp, easy on the eyes. Um, yeah, that's all, uh, all I can really say. Martin says, it's not a one millisecond response time. Don't be fooled by the marketing. It's four milliseconds gray to gray. The one millisecond you see on the box is pixel response time or MPRT, which is a more accurate measurement of motion blur and also input lag plays big role in a gaming monitor. Great video though. Uh, thank you for the comment, uh, appreciate that. Yeah, input lag does play a big role in a gaming monitor. I don't really notice a whole ton of input lag, but I am coming from a 4K TV that I, that I play games on, and that has around 35 milliseconds of input lag. So I, I will agree with you on the one millisecond response time. It's not a true uh, one millisecond response time. It just refers to the motion blur. Um, unfortunately, don't have a device to test the, the actual response time of the monitor. Uh, and until I do, I'm just gonna have to go with what, what, these, uh, what the manufacturer says on their website or on the box. Vincent Yang says, at 0A, that smile is a complex. Thank you. Torch9361 asks, can you vase amount this? Uh, yeah, you can. It, it, there's instructions in the manual on how to do it and everything. Um, I don't have a need for it, but yes, you can vase amount it. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and funny or whatever it is, uh, give it a big thumbs up. It really lets me know that you appreciate this type of content. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one where I go to a corporate party and I eat some food that's just really, really bad. Sometimes.